What's up, what's happening? And welcome to UJTV. I go by the name of Busi Siwe, but for you, of course, you can just cut it down and call me Busi. I don't roll alone. What's up, Woody? Hello, Busi. Hi, guys. My name is Woody, as Busi just said now. Uh, welcome to UJTV. It is a Friday today, and we've got mm. an awesome show with a red lineup. We've got tech features, MC rep battle finals, and also um, quite a whole lot of cool stuff on the show. We'll see, what else do we have on the show today? Of course, we'll be seeing some updates on the Sassel Solar Challenge and some events happening in Johannesburg and what this ALS Ice Bucket Challenge is all about. Indeed. Up next, we've got Graham. He's going to be showing us how to strengthen our core and work out for the mm -hmm. summer bodies. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Let's go check it out. Coming up next on Young and Fit. Hey guys, in previous episodes we've taken a look at how to burn fat. Now if you think I've jumped the gun a little and you want to build some strength first, stay tuned. I'm going to show you some exercises on how to build core strength. As always, you must be warmed up before you can begin any workout. You can do anything from a short run to high knee kicks for about 10 minutes to warm up. Once you're done with those, catch your breath and let's move on to the good stuff. I'm going to show you some core strengthening exercises. Now they range from quite easy to quite challenging, so you can work your way up as you improve. We'll start with planking. You do this by going down onto your elbows in the push-up position, and then holding it for 30 seconds to a minute. You can do these on your elbows, or if you're feeling strong, you can straighten your arms. To focus on the obliques, you can do side planks like this, either on your elbow or with a straight arm. Here you have the option to either hold the position for 30 seconds to a minute, or do a set of either 15 or 20 lifts on each side. When these start becoming easier, you can move on to star planks. You do these by lifting one leg during a side plank. Again, you can hold these for 30 seconds to a minute, but these are super challenging, so don't feel bad if you can't hold them for very long. If you'd like to use these in a high intensity session or Tabata workout, you can do side plank switches. You do these by doing side planks, reaching up with your other arm and then switching over onto your other side. You can take it up a notch by raising your leg into a star plank in each rep. These exercises will help you get your core strong in no time. Now remember to stretch properly after every workout and to take a rest day between training days to give your body a chance to recover. Well, that is all from me. Watch again next time for more tips on how to stay young and fit. Happy training. Happy training indeed, man. I think I also need to do some of those exercises. You know, I need a bit of a six pack. Summer's coming, you know, you know. Um, Phil Jewel is a brand new show, as you all know, on Mindset Learn Channel 319 on DSTV. And they're covering the happenings at the Sassel Solar Challenge. But in this particular episode, there was a truck and something happened, something about an accident and, uh, let's check it out. Next time on Fuel Duel. Leg four of the Sassel Solar Challenge covers 575 kilometers from Springbok to Cape Town. The battery's definitely shot. So we're now gonna have to connect up the hydrogen fuel cell. And something goes very, very wrong. We're gonna find out once we get there, but apparently the ambulance is en route. This is Fuel Duel. Fuel Duel has been covering the last, the previous um, Sassel Solar Challenge, but for this year, we saw the big reveal, the Ilanga 2, but little did I know that that is actually a prototype vehicle. And of course, the team has to get together, put their brains together, develop new systems, and build this year's Sassel Solar Vehicle. Let's check out what's been happening. The 2014 UJ solar car model was revealed in early August. We caught up with project manager Warren Herter to hear the latest on their progress. We're in the electronics lab. We've been waiting on a few components. We've had a few delays, unfortunately, but um, we hope to have everything here sort of this week and then assemble it through the weekend and hopefully do our first test run next week. And then by the end of next week, hopefully ready to do some high-speed testing. 
so you'll see behind me we actually have the the solar cells that we've pasted onto the top of the vehicle that was a very tedious process they're very sensitive solar cells so we put them in position and we just need to solder them underneath and then across the lab on my left hand side we've also got the batteries that we're working on we're testing motors um, setting up wiring looms so there's quite a bit happening in this workshop at this stage This car is quite different to the previous car in that the materials are, are definitely a major up. Before we, we weighed the car, it was around 330 kilos. Our target now is under 150 kilograms, which for a car you can imagine, it's, it's the weight of a, a largish person. So <laughs> it's a very light car. The biggest challenge has definitely been the learning curve. Before we've worked with basic materials, we've sort of tried to keep things simple. But now we've, we've moved it up a gear, we're trying to push the technology boundaries, we're trying a lot of different things. So everything we've developed in-house as well, which is quite different to a lot of other teams. We, we're working on our own circuit boards, developing our own systems. We're using 3D printing technology throughout to, to optimize the vehicles. The goal for this year is definitely to take on the best. We've got the world number one coming through. We want to be on their tail. We want to take them on. I'm Marlene Fuchsia and I'm taking a look at some of the stories and happenings on our campus. In the past week, Professor Chris Lansbach of the University's South African Research Chair Institute for African Diplomacy and Governance hosted a talk with former South African politician and award-winning author Tony Leon. Leon headed the Democratic Alliance between 1999 and 2007. He talked about his book, Opposite Mandela encounters with South Africa's icon and shared his insights and behind the scenes memories of the country's first democratically elected president, Nelson Mandela. Continuing with notable guests and lectures hosted by UJ, to mark the 75th birthday of world-renowned music legend Hugh Masekela, the Wright Associates and UJ are presenting the inaugural Hugh Masekela annual lecture and concert. The lecture, in partnership with UJ's Faculty of Humanities, will be held at the Soweto campus on 9 September, and the concert will be at the Soweto Theatre on 10 September. Internationally acclaimed Zimbabwean singer, songwriter and heritage activist Oliver Mtukudzi will deliver the inaugural lecture. Of things arts and culture, we have some exciting news. This weekend sees the kickoff of the Johannesburg Arts Alive International Festival with Jazz on the Lake. Appearing at Zoo Lake will be, among others, the legendary Johnny Clegg, Kruna Vusinova, a cappella sensation The Soil, and vocalist Colbeth and Buso Koza. There's an enormous amount of entertainment that's spread across several of Johannesburg's theatres, and true to tradition, the festival has curated an exciting mix of dance, theatre, music, poetry, comedy, and visual arts for Jersey citizens over a 10-day period. And then going more local, opening tonight at Upstairs in Bamboo in Melville is the exhibition Baby Steps to Ballroom. Professor King Berman of UJ's Fine Arts Department will be opening Bonnie Walter's new exhibition. And moving on to sport. UJ is very proud of students Shania Tsaka and Ruan Welifir who are representing South Africa at the World University Squash Championships in Chennai, India. They are currently in India and the tournament continues until the 8th of September. So we'll watch their progress closely and of course wish them the very, very best of luck. And finally, UJ Football is keeping up the good work in Varsity Cup. On Monday night, they played out one all draw with the Northwest University in the varsity football match in Mafi King. Both sides remain fixed at the summit with one round of fixtures to go. And just a reminder that this coming Monday, the 1st September, the first team will be playing at home at the ABW Miller Stadium against Limpopo. So get there to support our UJ players. And wrapping up this week of happenings, here are some of the highlights from their latest match against the Northwest University. Until next time. On the 25th of August, fans filled the Muffy King Sports Ground to watch two top contenders for the Varsity Cup. UJ faced Northwest University in a high-stakes match for the number one spot on the log. 
Blue Jays' Ruben de Freitas buried a well-timed volley to put his team in the lead. Shortly after that, Lindani Dudula from Northwest University equalized. The match opened up in the second half as both teams fought to find their second goal. Strong defense and missed chances kept both teams tied. Fans braved the cold as day turned to night, while both teams failed to pull ahead. It was a tightly contested match from both sides. Northwest University, who needed the win to secure the number one position, played especially hard. Despite their efforts, the game ended in a one-all draw, leaving UJ at the top of the log for the Varsity Football Cup. With their next match against Limpopo taking place at home, UJ is confident of securing their place in the semi-final. That was awesome, guys. Our boys are really doing good, hey? We did draw this time, but I'm sure that uh, the next game we're going to be doing much better. Um, up next, we do have uh, Nicholas. He's going to be doing a tech feature. You know, Nicholas and his gadgets always got something really cool to show us. Um, he'll also be telling us more about uh, the robotic workshops that are happening here at UJ. Let's go check it out. The Faculty of Engineering and the Built Environment at the University of Johannesburg is committed to the awareness and literacy of technology to students and learners of all ages. Their very own Techno Lab was established in 1995 and has presented courses to over 60,000 students to date. Here to tell us more about Robot Science, one of the workshops offered by UJ's very own Techno Lab, we have Michael Itteshank or Coach Michael, as he is known to the students. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, most fortunate to have this opportunity to yes. speak to you. Now, you are presenting these courses, uh, robot science courses. Um, what exactly do you do? What do you teach the students in these courses? Uh, what happened is we now in our first pilot program where we've got more uh, underprivileged teenagers from Soweto and they are actually busy building this at the moment and the wonderful thing about this is you get a blank printed circuit board, you put all the little parts on, you learn to solder but you also learn theory, you learn about atoms and protons, electrons, how does a transistor work, what is a silicon crystal, so there's quite a lot of theory but it's not too theoretical, it's quite practical. So. Uh, and once they've built this, obviously then they learn to program and it programs in real world programming language called BASIC. So if I put this on the table like so, and this is now a, a, a whiskers sensor type robot. So it's basically it'll run up and, and it'll drive along until it touches on an obstacle. And the idea of this is that it can find its way through a maze. Um, and the other thing that we teach them is, is an interpretation program where you can take an ordinary Sony television remote control this is just a generic one and if you plug in this computer here we've got some programs on the computer but uh, like mum and baby with an umbilical cord in scientific <laughs> language this is a USB serial cable connect and what we can do is in just a moment we can reprogram and I'll show you the program in a moment but what we can do is if we go F9 there, now it's downloaded the program to the robot and now the robot behaves in a completely different way. It'll wait for you to point this remote controller at the robot and you can basically, you can turn the robot around, uh, you can drive the robot backwards and forwards. So this is a remote controlled robot and all of this is achieved with just a few lines of code and what I'll do is I'll show you what the code looks like here. Do you teach uh, students um, how to code and how to program as well? That looks very complicated. Absolutely, we teach them. It, it is so important for young people to learn programming. Mm. And there's various levels at which you can learn programming. So at the most basic level, you can just learn blocky, drag and drop type programming. Yeah. But I actually teach real programming. So who can apply for these courses? I tend to specialize in 14 to 18 year olds because um, they, they are already young people and they are almost adults and they've got opinions and views about things and they want to know that what they're doing is relevant and important mm. and that they can build towards a career with that. And that's why we teach them real programming languages. I, I just, I've felt that uh, from all of the pilot projects that I've run in the past that a young person aged 14 onwards is very ready for this experience yeah. and, and they get a lot out of it. Well. Thank you, Michael, for your time. 
And there you have it. If you want to build your very own Wally, make sure you check out www.robotscience.co.za to find out where and when you can get your hands on one of these. See, I'm not really a fan of this tech stuff, but robot building is definitely something I would do. But moving right along, I'm sure you guys know all about the ALS Bucket Challenge. It looks fun, it looks super, but actually there is a deeper meaning behind it. Brandon, tell us more. Hi guys, I'm Brandon and I'll be telling you guys about the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Now that sounds like quite a mouthful, a mouthful. You might recognize it as all the videos of people dumping a bucket of ice water over their heads in an effort to raise awareness about the disease ALS. There's been more than one and a half million view, uh, videos of this since the beginning of June up until now, which makes it one of the longest online trends running to date. It has also been mentioned two and a half million times on Twitter. But having said that, do people actually know what ALS is? It stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Hopefully, I hope I pronounced that right. It really is a mouthful. And it's known as a disease which slowly paralyzes you. Um, I have a video that I'm going to show you guys just to give you a bit of insight. So why did I do it? Uh, I've been so terrified of ALS my entire life because it runs in my family. ALS runs in my family. My, my, my grandmother had it. She was a second mother to me. My mother was diagnosed when I was in high school. And uh, five months ago, I was diagnosed at 26 years old. That's probably why nobody talks about it, is because it's so challenging to watch, it's so challenging to see and to talk about. Nobody wants to see a depressing person that's dying and has two to five years to live. They don't want to talk about it, they don't want their day ruined. Now it truly is a touching video, it isn't the, the full video I ever so I do urge you to go and watch it. You can click here, we actually have embedded, you can watch the full video here. After seeing all these videos going viral however, we want to know how does it actually add to the cause though and aren't people kind of getting carried away just to try and get attention online by posting videos like this? Well, according to the rules, no. There are you have two options when raising awareness about the cause. One, you donate $100 to any ALS charity of your, of your choice. And secondly, you do, the, you do the challenge, you actually throw a bucket of ice water over your head simply to raise awareness about ALS. Not everyone has means to pay for, so therefore choose to raise awareness and try and share and get their friends to be involved because it hasn't been largely acknowledged over the past couple of years. So, like I said, if you're going to do it, just be sure that you're doing it for the right reasons and you know what it is all about. Speaking of the Bucket Challenger, um, Sam Cowan from 94.7 nominated a bunch of us down here and the crew to do the challenge. So let's have a look at that. Two, one. Thanks, Sam Cow, for nominating, oh. le letting us in the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> People look out for who we nominate in the tag for this video. <laughs> well, I think our reactions tell you just how cold that water really was. Now that you know what the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge is all about, be sure to do your challenge and make sure that you, you mention us on Twitter at UJ Television and on Facebook at UJTV. You can of course also follow both of those platforms for update on the next week's episode of UJTV. That is all for me this week guys. Let's see what Woody has for you. Thanks Brendan. That was a cold and awesome initiative from our guys here at the UJ team. On a lighter note, 94.7 hosted the MC Rap Battle recently, which took place at 44 Stanley. Anyone was open to participate and we have had a victor. I'm very excited to find out who the winner was. Let's go check it out on this, that and the other.
We're at 44 Stanley in Auckland Park today for the producer Brad rap battle with 94.7. We were looking for the best rapper in Joburg. The top 16 battled it out, and one man came out on top. Give it up, 44 Stanley. Come here. The UJ represents uh, APK campus of the uh, Highfield Rep Battles and I'm the proud winner today of the finals. Yes, and shout out so, to UJ uh, TV. Stay tuned. Moment. Battle rap is a, is a form of expression, you know, and that's really dope that they getting behind something like this. I thought the competition was very intense. And the two guys at the end, it was a very, very close battle. Yo, what's up? This is AKA. You watching UJ TV? Keep it locked right there. Peace. I mean, it's absolutely great to see that big brands are coming together, you know, to do these rap battles. You know, what do you think about the rap industry in this country? Well, what I can tell you is that we've come a long way. Hey? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. when it comes to hip hop, you know, even uh, the music videos, the way that everything is done now mm -hmm. is much more professional. Yeah. I heard what the guys had to say, and it's not a simple thing, hey, to battle someone it's and not. think it's on, on your the feet, spot. you know, on the spot, <sighs> and uh, sound like it's a script, you yeah. know. But um, it was a good one, and congratulations to our boy, actually, mm -hmm. from UJ. What up? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Nice well one. done to the guy who won. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's that time where we have to love and leave you. But don't forget, keep the conversation going at UJ Television on Twitter and UJ TV on Facebook. But from me, Boosie. And myself, Woody. Cheerio. Well,